I'm Jeremy Howard and I have been involved in this uh, Decorated School Network project from the start and uh, I'm one of the lead investigators of it with Cathy Burke and uh, we've um, we came to Templewood really uh, because it seems to have stood out as one of the most interesting schools to start off with uh, and it's interesting from our point of view and particularly my point of view because of the three murals by Pat Chu. First of all I'd never seen them in the flesh uh, I'd seen them in reproduction which Sue Hitchin had sent me or put on the blog and they looked extremely fascinating. That meant that I got involved in trying to track down the Chu family together with Sue and we did find them eventually about two weeks ago as I mentioned in my talk actually. Uh, it was a long story but I found Stephen Novi the stepson first and uh, gave him a ring and he said yes uh, Pat Chu is my mother, uh, my stepmother. So uh, it, it the thing then snowballed and we then got the rest of the family involved and and of course we came here to look at the, the murals and to talk about them. I found them fascinating from three perspectives really and I probably won't be able to remember them all while I'm on camera but uh, uh, first of all as an art historian I think to try and analyse them and their place in art history to see how they fit in. Secondly uh, as an art historian looking at education and educational spaces and imagery in particular to see what they're saying to children uh, essentially and thirdly to try and um, deconstruct them in terms of technique uh, the the style that uh, Pachu has uh, worked in with them and subject matter to think of them in terms of their subject matter. Why have they chosen the selfish giant? Why have they chosen the magic fish? And why have they chosen St. Nicholas? All of which make very good sense for children and for primary school children of primary age. Uh, so that those were the, my sort of lead-off points. And today I've managed to answer some of those questions just by being here for the first time and looking at them firsthand. So I think they now strike me as telling very vivid stories to children as l and they're learning tools really for the children Ex they're sort of experiential tools as well for them uh, the selfish giant I love the fact that it's Oscar Wilde I, the, you can't really understand how it's working the fence is broken there's lots of the different foliage there's all those little triangles that make up the hats and the different pieces of it it's it's frightening figure, but it's also a playful figure. Uh, it reminds me of some uh, frescoes of saints, uh, which I mentioned when we were out in front of it. Uh, it it's a bold, strong image. The magic fish, or the the, the fisherman and the fisherman's wife's tale, uh, is more subdued in many respects. I love it because of the fishing rod, as I mentioned in, when we were in front of it. I love it because it relates easily to Cale Nielsen's uh, illustration from the Hansel and Gretel Tales of Grimm, uh, which was published in London in 1925, his uh, illustration. And I love it because it's Pat Chu. Uh, the, the red, uh, now that may not be the original red, but the, this use of the bold colour background and having the figures in their flattened form stand out against that background with bits of stylized foliage there's the the wife in two guises really and so I, I think that's that's a wonderful image then the one the large one of the lives of St Nicholas in the dining room also is extremely imaginative in that it captures the lives of St Nicholas in those four different um, really it's a montage of stories I suppose and she has definitely captured something that comes out of um, maybe it's early Renaissance Italian Renaissance uh, mural fresco painting maybe it's also Byzantine fresco painting but she's melded them wonderfully into something modern and secular and religious and intercultural 
and so it, it just is a magical experience and I wish that we could film the children actually really engaging in, with them in front of them. When I had a little sneak conversation with the children as they were lined up to say their piece in front of that big uh, St. Nicholas, they actually said to me, sort of wi in whispers, yeah, we often were inspired by this and had lots of stories to tell about it. Uh, and maybe teasing those out could be something for the future, uh, the kind of stories it provokes. Uh, because it's not just something that is directing in one direction. It's not saying to a child, this is the way you should be, or you will be, or go and go along this direction. It's, it's opening them up in, in many ways.